Hello and welcome to my channel ACR MRCP. I am Dr. Aparajita Roy and today's video is part 3 of the three part video series where I compare the medicine training in India versus medicine training in the UK. Today's video is about MD medicine versus IMT in UK. A lot of you have asked me many many questions on IMT in the UK. Now, if you are unsure whether you should do medicine training in India or whether you should medicine training in the UK, this video is for you. Today, we will compare what are the similarities and dissimilarities between MD medicine training and IMT. And also, I will give you an overview about internal medicine training like the training structure, how to apply, what are the things to expect, etc. If after watching this video, you decide to do IMT in the UK and you think you need more information, please do let me know in the comment section below. I will make a separate video on a step-by-step -step guide on IMT application. So, let's start today's video now. Uh, MD medicine and IMT are quite similar uh, with regards to the fact that both are three years dedicated medicine training. Also, in both of these training programs, uh, there is active learning, which means that uh, you learn on the job. In the training program, you are attached to a hospital where you diagnose and treat patient independently as well as under senior supervision. And as you go along from first to second to third year and assume a more senior position, you then in turn guide your juniors. However, there are several differences between MD medicine and IMT. Let's explore. First of all, let's talk about the differences in the entry criteria between MD medicine and IMT. For MD medicine, you have to ensure that you get a good rank in NEET PG. Once that is done, then based on your rank, you can decide on your choice of a subject or hospital. Please remember that you also have to consider issues like government bonds, reservations, etc. But the entry is pretty straightforward. IMT entry criteria is quite different. You will have to have the required competencies at par with a UK graduate to be eligible to apply. You can either complete your foundation training in the UK or submit a crest form which is like an evidence to prove that you have the same competencies at par with a UK doctor at the same level. Please remember that you have to have minimum two years of postgraduate experience before you are eligible to apply. Your internship already gives you one year so all you need is one more year of house job. The third and most important criteria is the GMC registration. You can get it either through PLAB or through an MTI post or through MRCP. Once you are confident that you fulfill the eligibility criteria, you apply through an online portal called ORIEL. You fill up an extensive application form giving all the details about your work experience and your commitment to internal medicine training. You give yourself a self-assessed score as to how suitable you are for this internal medicine training post. The training panelists will then review your application and once they are happy, you will be shortlisted for interview. Depending on your application and interview scores, you get a rank which will then allow you to choose the trust and then you can start training. So you can see that uh, the application process for MD medicine and IMT is quite different. Now, if after your internship and graduation, you're unsure of which specialty you want to do, a NEET PG gives you the flexibility to choose your specialty after the exam based on your rank. However, on the flip side, you may not always get your desired branch in your desired city based on your NEET PG rank. IMT, on the other hand, is completely different. In your application form, you have to convince the panelists why you want to do internal medicine and since graduation, what are your achievements to show that you are committed to internal medicine training. So, it is very important that you start preparing early. Following internship, make sure you pick up a house job in a medicine or an allied department and start building your CV. 
Now many of you have asked me whether it is compulsory to work in the UK before applying for IMT. I would strongly recommend that. Not only will it be very easy for you to get your crest form signed, you can also show in your application that you have NHS experience. This will give a major boost to your application. Now let's talk about the training structure of both the programs. You have to pay some fees in both and you also get a handsome salary. In India, this depends to a certain extent which hospital or which city you are working in. IMT salaries in the UK are more or less standardized. Also, please be aware of any government bonds that may be associated with completion of MD medicine training in India. There are no such government bonds with IMT training. As I had mentioned earlier, Learning is mostly active and it is on the job hands on training, but you also get a fair amount of classroom teaching, journal club, seminar, training workshops and professional courses. One thing that is different in MD medicine is the thesis. You have to do an original research work mandatorily as a part of your dissertation. If you can get your thesis published in a reputed journal in PubMed, that is an added bonus. This also earns you extra points if you want to apply for specialty training in the UK after completion of MD medicine. Now sim training is something that I absolutely love. I never had the opportunity of sim training in India and I believe sim training should be a part of all curriculum or all training programs. This gives you an opportunity to face real life practical scenarios which then tests you your decision making abilities, your attitude towards difficult scenarios and gives you an idea to assess how you will perform in high pressure scenarios. So you can see that neither MD medicine or IMT training is easy but both of the programs take you through the grind so that budding physicians can bloom into doctors of tomorrow. Now let's talk about how do you successfully complete your training and get your degree. For MD medicine, you have to pass the MD final exam which consists of four theory and one practical paper. Some institutions do have yearly exams to monitor your progress. There are no exams for IMT but that does not mean that it is easy to complete the degree. Instead, there are yearly reviews called ARCP which stands for Annual Reviews of Competence Progression. During the entire three years, you have to collect evidence that you are ticking off all the boxes that are required in the curriculum to complete your training. This also includes your supervisor reports. Now these are scrutinized annually by panelists and only if they are happy with your work will they allow you to move on to the next level. You may ask where does MRCP fit into this? It is not mandatory to do MRCP during your IMT years but it is desirable. MRCP is compulsory if you want to proceed to ST training as it is an entry level criteria for super specialty training but not an exit criteria for IMT. For additional information, uh, these are a couple of websites that will give you authentic up to date information about IMT training. Please feel free to go through these for more updates or you can just wait for my next video. Now, I am going to discuss a very important topic as many of you have asked me whether you can do IMT training from India. There are certain private institutions that allow you to complete internal medicine training from India which is believed to be at par with the IMT training in UK. You can also directly join ST training in the UK after successfully completing IMT training from India. But please be aware of the pros and cons associated with IMT training in India. Please remember that there is some controversy regarding whether IMT training is accepted by MCI. And also, uh, please remember that doing training in India does not allow you to understand the structure or the way NHS works, which can be very, very different from India. 
also it is not cheap uh, you have to pay somewhere around 20 lakh rupees per annum so for a three year course it would be somewhere around 60 lakhs so it is subject to market risks please read the offer document carefully before applying that's it for today guys if you have liked this video please give me a thumbs up and share this video with other aspirants also let me know in the comment section below how you found this video and what are the other topics you would want me to make videos on. Till then, stay safe, keep studying and ace your MRCP.